Hey guys, Trail Chasers here. Today, I want to go over a change you can make to your bike that's going to benefit it a ton. And that's going tubeless. While tubeless, at first, may seem like a big undertaking, and quite honestly, for a lot of first-timers, it is, the benefits are numerous, and you should definitely look into it. Now, first and foremost, I'll be honest with you. Many people say that tubeless saves weight, but it really doesn't save that much. I'm only saving a few grams, and to be honest, you won't notice it. The real benefit, however, comes in the ability of the tire's carcass to roll over stuff easier. Without the tube, there's less rubber. Less rubber means the rubber can conform to other shapes, such as roots and rocks in the trail, so you'll get more traction. You can also run lower pressures because you won't pinch flat. And the main benefit of tubeless is, well, just what I said, no pinch flats. No tube, you can pinch flat. It's great. I haven't had to change a tube in my bikes for the past years because of tubeless. Admittedly, one time when I was out on the trail, I did tear the beat off of a tubeless and ended up limping home with a tube in the tire, but I fixed it when I got home. So that gets us to the next part of setting it up. Setting up tubeless can be kind of a pain in the butt. It's pretty tough, and if you don't get it right, you're going to waste a lot of CO2 cartridges or a lot of time. Either way, it's not fun. Unless you're lucky enough to have an air compressor at home, most of us really go over to little CO2 bike inflators, and it's expensive, and if you don't get it right the first time, you've wasted some money, which is no fun. Look online, and you can find tubeless inflators, such as the AirShot, for around 80 bucks or hub higher, but I don't really want to spend that much for a tubeless inflator. Look on YouTube for DIY tubeless inflators, and you'll find little soda pop bombs that are pumped up to 100 PSI. I'm not going to do that. I like my face, I like my hands, I want to keep them the way they are. So instead, I thought I'd go out to the hardware store, spend 40 bucks, and build a nice tubeless pump. After running off to Home Depot and finding the supplies I needed, I realized it's not going to be that hard to make this. So, anyways, let's get to work. First thing you're going to want to do is take your 3 inch end caps and drill two holes in them. You'll need a Schrader valve from a bike tube and preferably a Presta. With the Presta valve, you want to drill it to where you can push it through and glue it in place. So once you've done that, just epoxy it in place and it'll hold good. Make sure you got a nice airtight seal. What I did was put epoxy into the valve when I stuck it in and I put a little bit of epoxy on the outside just to ensure that there was an airtight seal. Next, I took the Presta valve that I was also going to use and I removed the core from it. This allows the air to flow through it freely. Now, that's going to be an issue later, but I have ways of addressing that, so just keep watching. Anyways, you'll want to do the same thing with the Presta valve. Make sure that you get an airtight seal on both of these, otherwise it's going to be a pain in the butt going through later trying to figure out any air leaks in the system. While the epoxy for those two is drying, you can go ahead and take the 3 inch ABS pipe and the other end cap of our ABS and apply some of that glue that we bought for it. Now, you don't want to overdo it, and trust me, this stuff's really, really strong. Do not use it indoors. You'll knock yourself out so quick. Uh, I really, really recommend you do this outside or in a garage like I did where there's plenty of air coming through and air and everything up because it is strong stuff. Now, press it in there. Make sure it's pressed in good and hard. And then just leave it for 10 minutes. Don't touch it. Don't screw with it. You're only going to make things worse. After that's cured up and the epoxy is cured on our Presta and Schrader valves, and that end cap, do the same with it. It's starting to look something like that air shot that I was talking about earlier, isn't it? Now that you've done that, you can take a vinyl tube, place it over the Presta valve where the core has been removed. You can screw it on a little bit, that helps it hold better, but this is a way that we have an easy access to our tire that we're trying to inflate without really having to reach around and fiddle with everything. I just happen to have a little hose clamp from one of my Avid brake bleed kits that I don't use anymore lying around, so I use that on the vinyl tubing and it holds it sealed shut. If not, you can just bend the tubing or you can hold it with a pair of pliers or vices or a lock jar or whatever you got. Anything really works and it'll hold the air just fine. The weakest joint on this system is rated up to 120 PSI, but because of the size of it, 
I rarely had to go over 30 PSI to get them to pop on the beads, which is really nice. It means that I don't have to worry about it blowing up in my face and nearly killing me. And it just gives me peace of mind knowing that really no matter what tire I'm trying to mount up, this thing's got enough airflow to mount it. Trust me, it mounts stuff quick and it mounts it real easy. So after letting it dry over the go. course of a day, I came back, pumped it up for the initial tests, and tried to air up a Maxxis DHR on a WTB STP I-25 rim. And long and behold, it was a piece of cake, which was so nice for me. I've looked into so many issues for inflating tubeless tires, and I finally decided to just build my own, and I'm more more than happy that I did. In the end, it's a pretty simple device that sets out to accomplish a simple goal. It's basically a temporary tube to build up as much pressure as possible and then shoot it all as fast as it can into the tire. So you can alter your dimensions a little bit or whatever, it's pretty flexible. Although I would recommend using either ABS or PVC. PVC is higher pressure rated but it's going to be a lot more expensive. I didn't want to spend too much so I bought the ABS. It'll hold up just fine, and I don't have to worry about it. Anyways, this has been Trail Tracers. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. If you could, please leave a like. It helps me out to make more videos for you guys that watch my videos. Anyways, I'll catch you guys on the trails. Bye bye